Mulholland Circus in Northern New South Wales, my boasting Mullen Bimby. That is very cool. It's very nice to speak to someone who has the regional perspective, especially because we're in currently in the metro space right now having this conversation. Yeah. Um, I'm really interested. I've got a lot of points I want to talk about, but I'm going to start with yeah. um, what's your perspective right now on how circus sits in the rest of the youth art space? Because yeah. obviously, I'm a theatre kid, so I'm very fascinated in the counterpoint of circus. So I'm really excited to actually even be at these national gatherings. So circus, youth circus especially, can often be our own little subset, and we have a very strong group. Um, we have YCAN, which is a little group of us that meets regularly. We have our own kind of symposiums and summits, but actually, I think being here this weekend is being even more important because actually together we are stronger, which mm. is through all of the disasters and all of the things I've faced is that community is really what gets us through. So I suppose circus is great because we use our theatre techniques, we use our theatre games, but then we go a step further and we're also that fantastic fitness benefit. Yeah. So you're kind of juggling, you're tumbling, you're doing hard things, but also it can be non text based so it's also accessible for um, lots of people with language barriers or, yeah. yeah, culturally it can be even more accessible. So, yeah, there's a lot of benefits to circus. And then some people just do it because it's an alternative to football, you know, yeah. and it's not competitive. So, and you get the performing arts as aspect, so it's kind of like everything in one package, I suppose. <laughs> Which is so exciting, especially for young kids when you're trying to expose them to everything in the universe. Totally. Um, and then to filter to something we heard today yeah. about how following a natural disaster in Region North and New South Wales, yeah. you had successfully advocated to like your government contacts and you received funding to help you through that. And I'm really interested in knowing what it was like to successfully advocate and to hear somebody go on the government side, oh, no, wait, I've got you. So it was really fundamental. Um, so it was six weeks of pure hell. So um, waking up every single day and not knowing whether we would actually survive um, because there was 40 centimetres of mud and muck that went through our building. So uh, two training spaces, seven containers, three vehicles. Luckily our big top tent was in Adelaide, so it was fine and not impacted. But So it took six weeks to clean and every day, some days there were up to 70 volunteers cleaning all of our costumes everything circus also has a lot of equipment so everything was on the floor mm. to be covered in the muck and the mud and the sewage and the polluted water so yeah in terms of advocating i suppose it's having a great relationship with people um and we were very lucky that the local government were very supportive and our local rdo um, and politicians were there straight away to support us um, and were there ready to be on the ground I suppose what we did at the time was, um, you know, it was a Sunday, it was the last thing we wanted to do, was actually come in and, you know, tour people around to show them what we're doing. But we had two of our young people do the tour. Um, and we had photos up on the wall to show very clearly the story of what we'd been through because we were halfway through the cleanup as well. So by this time it actually looked really well. Um, but the two supports that we got was support from the Create New South Wales government, but also a five thousand, a ten thousand dollar grant, or five thousand that we got from um, a local philanthropic organisation, which meant within three days I could buy the plywood. So, in a natural disaster, people only need two resources: that we need money and people. And we had the opposite of offerings. So all these other arts organisations, amazing offerings, were like, "Do you want our old park ants?" And it's like. No thanks. Um, so I couldn't even actually respond to all the offers yeah. of support, which was beautiful that there are so many offers of support, but people don't actually offer what you need. And yeah. so to have um, the government um, support us by offering what we needed was really amazing. So that was, yeah, very lucky to have that. And that's super exciting to hear that like those voices are coming through and yeah. there's people in the government that are going, this is where the money needs to go. Yeah. Um, I really, you said that one of the things we need in a crisis is people and money. Yeah. We've had a lot of discussion this week, I think, about how do we achieve as a youth arts industry and as people who are like invested in giving young artists opportunities to tell stories and yeah. achieving critical mass. Um, and as an organisation that had that support and an overwhelming support, I just want to know what you think, like, as a whole group of people wanting to help children, achieving critical mass looks like for us. A great question. So critical mass, I suppose, for the industry is that and we all know that that together we are stronger. Yeah. Um, so when all of our youth organisations band together, um, today Ben talked about the voting block. You go, well, at Spaghetti Circus, we've got 240 kids that come each week. We've got um, 15,000 people that engage with us over the year, and in a non-COVID year, we would access around um, 200,000 people because 
of our big top. So it's not always our shows, but our big top being like at Splendor, yeah. Woodford. So there's a that's, that's a lot of people. Yeah. And then you go, that's not just us. Then there's ATYP, then the circuits, then you, you, you kind of grow that by all of those people. So the critical mass is there. Um, I suppose I'm passionate though about not being reliant on funding so the tiny bit of money that we get 10 percent of spaghetti surfaces income is funded the rest when we're not in a COVID world is self-generated so where we use things like hiring out a big top 10 for festivals and events as a way of generating income so my personal passion was how do we do what we do without always having our hand out yeah um, because i suppose one benefit for spaghetti and youth arts um, funding was cut federally is we've never received it so I didn't lose something that others have lost and I acknowledge the loss of everyone in the room because they've lost programs, they've lost people, they've lost touch points, which is devastating. But yeah, we never had that, so we were in a very different space. Um, so we had to make our own money. We had to find other ways to be creative to achieve similar aims. Yeah, and so like moving forward, obviously yeah. as a sector and just spaghetti circus in general, like. What are your next plans for advocacy? What's the next big step? Like, what's the issue you're like, listen to this, this is what we need? So I suppose for us, um, people would have heard me talk quite a bit about the regional context for touring. Yeah. I'm really passionate about shaking up regional touring um, because that same $40,000 for a one week tour of a national could fund a whole youth arts organisation in the regions or an offshoot. It may be a side project or it may be a partnership. Um, but I'm really interested in what, what long-term funding in the regions employing local artists looks like. I think it's really interesting because I am from Canberra, and Canberra is bitter, but I live in a regional town adjacent to Canberra that's actually 40 minutes outside called Queenbeam. Yeah. Um, and we have just had a massive shift with our local theatre the queue in doing that exact thing yeah. in hiring regional companies to tour to us. Yeah. The Q does not accept any major companies touring. They only accept regional Australian companies touring. Wow, that's fantastic. Or they fund local works. Yeah. And I, I'm very happy to say that it works and that their season is going really well. And local audiences want to see their faces and their stories on stage. So um, too often we've had a metrocentric model of touring and it's not yeah. to say it doesn't exist. It's a really important part of the ecosystem. So when I fight it, I actually say, and or, like we're adding on top. We're not taking away and saying no majors touring because we absolutely want those shows and those workshops. Yeah. But it's regional touring by, with and for. Just it's like got to go room. both ways because yeah. you've got to think about those people in context that may not have access to the stories of kids in regional areas. Yeah. But then if you tour a regional little show to the metro city yeah. and you let the politicians see what those kids are saying, like that's the step onto empathy, I think. And I think that's a really important advocacy point yeah. because people are seeing those stories and they're seeing their faces reflected back on the viewer stages to them. And that's a really exciting thing. Yeah, exciting thing for Oh my God, yeah, regional thing. <laughs> it's just so nice to see that present. Thank you.